go to lecture one to start the lecturing now, but there is a website, uh, this one that's shown here, uh, that I'll be clicking back and forth onto as we uh, now begin mostly the verbal discussion of the, the milestones in development and then uh, come here to take a quick look at a, a picture. <clears throat> so this uh, website is what I'll do so it can be more easily read. I'll go to the PowerPoint, control home. insert a new slide, I'll paste it here, and we'll start the show. <clears throat> so this is the web page uh, that will be supplement to lecture one. If you want to enter that in, get that loaded in your Internet Explorer, in addition to having lecture one posted from WebCT. If you don't have access to WebCT yet, it's all right. Uh, mostly what we're going to do today is just kind of cruise through some of the major milestones, uh, and it is uh, primarily uh, reading, <clears throat> and we'll pick up where we leave off at the, uh, the lecture on Wednesday. So that's www.vi.visembryo.com forward slash baby forward slash hp dot dot html. Let me get my pointer set on arrow. <clears throat> so there's a tremendous amount of terminology that will be presented in this class, but there are also very key concepts that we need to uh, establish. One is for curiosity, because we all uh, develop this way. Uh, we all uh, are uh, involved with uh, families being generated and created or having uh, uh, our own babies ourselves and so forth. So there's that interest. But then in addition, uh, it's expected that, or um, not an expectation, but typically most of the people that take this class are biology majors. If you get a degree in biology, then uh, you basically have the obligation in the general public to be able to inform people when they inquire about things. And with stem cell research and abortion and all the, uh, uh, the key issues in vitro fertilization, um, cloning, when all these topics uh, are uh, of uh, really key concern in society, then you have the obligation of, of sharing your knowledge to help clarify things with people. So uh, a good, strong background in this area uh, is essential to meeting that commitment. <clears throat> so there are uh, two major developmental periods. The prenatal, uh, figures 1, 1, 1, 2 uh, from the text, which is fertilization to birth. And then there is the postnatal, and that's birth to development. So developmental biology really is uh, the study from conception to death. It's the complete uh, spectrum of development from the, the moment we're conceived to the moment that uh, the life force uh, leaves the living organism. <clears throat> Embryology, of course, really uh, is more limited uh, in its uh, studies, and it's the prenatal uh, portion that we are uh, going to investigate. So the human reproduction and development really has a lot to do with the evolutionary uh, success of humans, and in part that's related to the internal fertilization and the uterine or intrauterine development of the embryo. <clears throat> uh, so uh, there is the placental trait. So are humans uh, viviparous or oviparous? What about the shark? The kids and I would go through this every time we'd go through the shark thing at SeaWorld. They are oviviparous. They hatch eggs, but the eggs hatch inside and then they give birth to live animals. So humans are uh, viviparous <coughs> uh, and there is uh, intrauterine development, of course, thereby. But we do have a unique kind of placenta as well 
that uh, is, uh, has a hemocorion. Uh, there is the uh, open blood lakes uh, in the human uterus, the endometrium, uh, with the implantation of the embryo. In some species, there's placenta, but not the hemocorion. There isn't the opening of the vasculature. So these are some of the key things that we keep in mind about uh, uh, commonalities among ma mammalian species and uniquenesses uh, of the human uh, situation. The postnatal uh, nutrition of the newborn is uh, via the maternal lactation, a mammalian trait, of course. The development of the limbic brain uh, is key for the nurturing uh, because uh, our young are not um, uh, precocious. They require a tremendous amount of nurturing. And then the development of homeostatic mechanisms, uh, the uh, uh, avian and mammalian traits uh, that are shared. So there's a significant uh, relationship between embryology and the evolutionarily uh, successful uh, human species. <clears throat> the uh, human development then uh, follows uh, this uh, line of events. There is gametogenesis, the formation of the haploid gametes, uh, the sperm and the eggs. There is fetalization with the fusion of the sperm and the egg to form the zygote. So there is a term for the uh, the, uh, the outcome of conception up until a very key point, and it is the zygote. So we will use specific terminology. We won't use the term embryo, embryo until we reach a certain uh, uh, developmental stage uh, that uh, satisfies, morphologically satisfies the criteria uh, in the definition of embryo. As I pointed out earlier, uh, I asked uh, Jennifer if she's eight weeks. If she isn't eight weeks, then we don't refer to the concepsis inside her as the fetus. It is still the embryo. So there's very strict definition of these stages of development. So you may find uh, individuals referring to the embryo erroneously in textbooks or in the literature based upon uh, that uh, strict definition that we'll be using. Uh, cleavage is a uh, special rapid mitotic cell division of the zygote to form the multicellular uh, embryo. So uh, we'll see that there's some unique things about these early cellular developments uh, that we don't always see in other cases of mitotically active cells. And specifically, uh, that is that uh, you'll have uh, cellular division without production of new cytoplasm. So the egg is a very large cell, and uh, it uh, will be split up into uh, equal portions, basically, to pr produce the first uh, small number of cells. Uh, I've forgotten exactly when it is, it's the eight or 16 cell stage, something like that, uh, before new cytoplasm is going to be developed. So this minimizes the metabolic needs of the cell very early on, uh, and anatomically at that point, of course, we don't have implantation, so the source of nutrients is just the solution that is within the fallopian tube. So these are key things to keep in mind. What limits the development, the rate of development and growth uh, of the uh, concepsis? So when I use this term concepsis, even though we didn't get to all the definitions yet, I'm referring to any stage along the way from fertilization to birth, um, whatever there is, the collective uh, group of cells, uh, which is, of course, the chorion, placenta, uh, and all the membranes and the, um, the developing uh, organism, whether it's um, zygote, embryo, or fetus. So that collective uh, embodiment of cells is the conceptus, everything that was produced by conception. <clears throat> so I use that term uh, when I don't want to be differentiating uh, any particular uh, specific uh, component or part uh, of the um, developing cells. 
So another aspect of development is morphogenetic uh, movements. So here we're not talking about genetic like the gene. Gene, the term gene originated from genesis to produce. Uh, um, so here we're talking about the genesis or the production of morphology. So there's cytogenesis is a term that we've used already, the development of the cells. Uh, histogenesis, the development of the tissue. Organogenesis and uh, development of the organism. So organismogenesis. Let me stop using it at about that point. So the m development of the morphological, uh, the characteristic morphological appearances uh, occurs really through uh, specialized types of movements. It'll be sheets of cells or clusters of cells that are migrating or individual cells uh, that are migrating. So <clears throat> there'll be a variety of things that we're going to have to try to envision that are occurring to produce the characteristic uh, feature, three-dimensional structure uh, that we see. In addition, we'll be looking at two-dimensional structures, just uh, sections through the developing consensus uh, to try to make sense of uh, what's happening. So there's cell and tissue differentiation. So uh, the part of cytogenesis is differentiation. We will talk about mitosis and meiosis, and one of the uh, first things that I would do when I was teaching the Bio-1, uh, and I still bring it up when I teach the, the AHS human anatomy class, the cellular part of it, uh, is that we challenge the idea of the mother cell dividing to produce two identical daughter cells. This is not true at all, because when the mother cell divides to form two daughter cells, one of those really is a mother cell that maintains the full mitotic capacity and replaces the mother as the reserve cell. So really the mother cell gives birth to a daughter cell that and stays as she was, changed somewhat, you'll never be quite the same, no matter what your doctor tells you <laughs> after you give birth. Uh, and uh, the daughter cell will go on to differentiate into the, uh, the um, post-mitotic functional cell. So it's very important to understand that when we think about the adult organism where uh, our skin cells are dying and falling off, the mucosal cells uh, are dying and, and uh, falling off, uh, our gastrointestinal lining virtually is replaced within four to, every four to six days. <clears throat> so we can understand it in that sense. The deep layer of cells are the reserve cells and they're giving birth to daughter cells that differentiate into the post-mitotic functional cell that lives for just a, a certain period of time, dies, and goes away. But what we're having with uh, the development of the organism is mitotic division where there's not a tremendous amount of cell loss. We're just dividing and producing and dividing and producing and we start with what is called the totipotent cell, a cell that has the potential of becoming anything. So the true stem cell that uh, is totipotent can become anything. Then there are other stem cells along the way that have uh, limited uh, routes of uh, differentiation, so they might be pluripotent. Uh, so a one or um, um, progenitor cell that can become all the different types of connective tissue cells, for example, and produce all those lineages, or they might be able to produce all the lineages, the uh, stem cells for producing all the different blood cells, the red blood cell, the different kind of white blood cells. So when we hear the term stem cell out in the public, everybody's thinking that an embryo or a fetus has to die to produce that, but it isn't true. Uh, the stem cells, stem cell is a term that has many, many different uh, definitions, if you will, depending upon how you're looking at the development. So we'll make an example before we come back to this idea of what's going on in the development of uh, the, uh, the consepsis. Saw an article 
uh, about uh, a dentist that just happened to collect one of his kid's teeth when it came out, took it right to the lab and put it on ice, took it to the lab and washed out all the little cells inside it and isolated stem cells from that that could differentiate into connective tissue cells, teeth forming cells, nerve cells, uh, the nerve protective cells, the myelin cells and things like that. So those are stem cells, but no embryo or no fetus had to die. Kid just had to lose their tooth like they lose all the time. <clears throat> so it's important that as biologists we understand that because most everybody in the general public, when they hear the word stem cell, all they can think of is abortion. So uh, it's important that we understand that. So we have these cellular lineages of differentiation, the totipotent cell that can become anything. To get that, you either have to de-differentiate a pluripotent cell, which we're not really very good at understanding yet, or you have to uh, um, collect it or procure it from a very early uh, consepsis. It may not be from the embryo or the fetus, it might have to be from uh, the umbilical cord or uh, something like that. So we need to understand that. So what it means for us is that at any one point in time, when we're following cytogenesis, histogenesis, and organogenesis, and we're going to see cells of different potency uh, within uh, a little spot on a histological slide that we might be looking at. They might be uh, multipotent or totipotent or pluripotent, some type of term like that, or bipotent or unipotent. So there's certain levels of commitment as we go along. So this cell and tissue differentiation uh, is a, uh, a concept when we see that set of terms which should invoke within us this whole picture of this broad spectrum of cells, uh, many of which can be called stem cells, and they're either predetermined to a very limited degree or a not so limited degree as to what they can differentiate into. So this is where we start taking words and putting these concepts and pictures in our mind. Right now we should be seeing one cell making several cells, making several cells, making several cells, breaking out into lineages <clears throat> that can become uh, a neuron, that can become an adrenal uh, cortical cell, that can become a skeletal muscle cell, that can become an osteoblast, and so forth. So we will see. So now I mentioned the term osteoblast. What does an osteoblast uh, get called uh, once it has become the mature, fully differentiated post-mitotic cell? An osteocyte. So we'll hear this term blast. So a blast cell is a type of a stem cell, but it's uh, typically unipotent, in the, especially in the example that we just gave. <clears throat> so we need this type of thinking in biology because we don't always have to kill an embryo or destroy an embryo. We're not always killing it. We're harvesting cells. Uh, we're disassembling an embryo, I guess, in order to get stem cells. Once we understand that full definition of stem cell, then we know there's more places to go and look for cells that are already predetermined. So if we want to produce a particular cell line or a particular tissue, and we go looking at certain locations uh, to do that. So pattern and polarity then become very important. So we've got these undifferentiated clusters of cells that are just kind of moving and dividing and, and reorganizing. Somehow they're figuring out where they're supposed to go. We'll see that different cells from different layers have got to end up in certain locations uh, in order to produce certain organs. So it's highly organized. And we just look at it in awe in this class. In the developmental biology, they look at all the molecular aspects of what is known uh, about it. <clears throat> so if you really get taken by that aspect of saying, how do they know where to go and when to do this and when to do that and how is it determined that they differentiate along this line, you may find yourselves taking the uh, developmental biology uh, in addition to this class to open up new avenues of uh, understanding and investigation along these lines. But there's going to be patterns in polarity. 
we certainly don't want our foot cells uh, ending up to uh, at the top of our head and growing out of our head. So something knows uh, or something tells cells to go someplace and develop into uh, our toenail uh, versus the the hair uh, that grows uh, on our ears when, once we turn 30 or 40. Didn't have hair growing on these little parts of my ears, the antitragus, when I was in my 20s, but now all of a sudden I find myself plucking my uh, earlobes, not my earlobes, my antitragus, uh, just about every week. So I'm glad it's not my toenails that popped up there you know, some 40 years later. So we have to have the, uh, the, the complete symmetry of the organism. Uh, if things don't uh, happen the way they should, then we end up with uh, potential aberrations. What's an aberration that uh, happened just recently at uh, Wilford Hall? Conjoined twins. So didn't get the complete destination signal uh, sent to the organs. We go to 250, is that correct? So we're just at this point. <clears throat> So uh, growth and maturation are a key part of it, and then as I just uh, indicated, the senescence of my ears starting to grow hair, uh, and then uh, ultimately the uh, end point for all organisms, death is a part of life. So we'll pick up with this.